Within the past seven days, we've had some of the biggest trucking companies in the world commit to electrification. In fact, massive joint venture between Paccar, Mercedes-Benz, and other trucking companies. They've got Volvo, Tesla. Pretty much everyone is saying, uh, you know what? Um, we got it wrong. Hydrogen is not the answer. Bill Gates had no idea what he was talking about when he said electric trucks just don't work. Actually, they do. And now we've seen the Tesla Semi, what that's capable of, even though Mercedes-Benz said it was a uh, basically a, a physics impossibility. Well, now we're seeing that actually it's not impossible. And it's just covered a staggering amount of range within 24 hours, meaning, yeah, electric trucks really can do it. They're really right here. We're on the verge, the absolute verge of an industry-wide disruption. This is many, many billions of dollars that will be disrupted, going from one person's hands, well, not one, but you know, one area's hands to another. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. Great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. And keep in mind, one of the biggest and best things, in my opinion, about electric trucks is they're so much safer than internal combustion engine trucks, not just the pollution. I mean, you've seen trucks that massive amounts of diesel fumes coming out of the truck. I'm not talking about that. That's an improvement. Yes, that there won't be that. It's also a big improvement having things like regen braking. Trucks can if they have a braking problem, which sometimes they do, and then they have crashes. Well, they can use the regen as kind of a backup braking system. Plus, you're saving a lot of energy. Getting a lot of you're getting a lot of uh, battery recharge simply by using those brakes. There's other big advantages to trucking much cheaper. Yes, it is much cheaper. Uh, trucks don't need to use superchargers, although they can use one megawatt chargers like those that Tesla have been installing. But Tesla's not the only one. There's a mine. In fact, there's several mines now using three megawatt charging. Imagine how fast a three megawatt charger could charge an electric truck if the Tesla Semi can charge in about 30 minutes using a, imagine what a three megawatt hour charger could do. So recently we've seen some impressive range numbers coming from Tesla and the semis, which have basically done what Tesla said they would. However, PepsiCo has released this kind of interesting information here. The Tesla semi covered 1,600 miles in under 48 hours. 1,600 miles in under 48 hours. That's quite a lot of range. This means that the Tesla Semi, it's proving to the many doubters who even on this channel here, many people say I'm wrong on electric trucks. It is hydrogen. By the way, I'd be intrigued to know what you guys think on this. Let's get kind of a tally. What do people think? Am I right on electric trucks? Am I wrong? Is it hydrogen? Is it something else? Of course, Bill Gates, by the way, if you're wondering what I meant in my comment at the start of this video, Bill Gates famously said electric trucks won't work. Uh, basically, he criticized the Tesla Semi said it. I don't remember saying it was a joke, but I think he said Tesla was, he alluded to Tesla being dishonest. Bill Gates, in my opinion, has turned into a bit of a Muppet. The reason I say Muppet is because on this channel, I try to comment on things that I have at least done five minutes of research on. I generally try to do a lot more than five minutes, but at least five minutes. I don't think Bill Gates even did five minutes of research on the concept of an electric truck. If he had, he'd know that actually they're very possible and very, not likely, but I mean, many billions of dollars have been committed to electric trucks from many, many companies who know more about trucking, know more about EVs than Bill does. Anyhow, the Tesla Semi is proving to actually be doing what it says. The North American Council for Freight's Efficiency or the NACFE run on less program in its first independent real world test on range and charging, the figures were pretty damn impressive. Tesla Semi is participating in this program to actually find out whether they could work in the real world. Did 1,600 miles in under 48 hours. So we don't know exactly how much under. However, during that time frame, this was the distance covered. 794 miles on day two and 806 miles on day three. Now you're probably thinking, oh, maybe they're driving slowly to get this kind of range. Like, Hypermiling. I mean, if you hypermile, then you could get probably another 400 miles of range, but it wasn't. It was being driven at real world speeds. In fact, for 90% of the time, the trucks were being driven on highways at highway speeds. NACFE has verified that these are fairly fully loaded when they leave and they stay fairly loaded, said NACFE's director, Mike Roth. 
Now, Mike Roth, you would think that it'd be in his interest to kind of downplay the capability of a Tesla Semi. That's generally what the old guard do. They sort of say the new, the new products, the new stuff that's coming to disrupt us, it's not very good. But that wasn't what they said at all. NACFE's principle of nation of carbon-free transportation, Dave Mullaney confirmed that these are beverage trucks without chips and rarely running empty. Due to the heft of the battery, they lose some payload capacity compared to diesel trucks, but the figure isn't significant, said Roth. The lost payload capacity is between 2,200 to 4,400 pounds, which is really nothing for vehicles that can weigh around 80,000 pounds. That includes the extra 2,000 pound allowance that EVs get. Now, we don't know exactly what payloads they were running, but we know they certainly weren't running on empty. And we know what Pepsi delivers, it's drinks. It's not chips, it's not Frito-Lay. It's actually, they were delivering drinks. Fast charging speeds, of course, are very, pretty much the key reason that these trucks were able to charge, were able to do this kind of range. They weren't actually charged on one gigawatt charges. They were charged on Tesla's 750 kilowatt mega charges, which give five to 80% charge. So basically empty to 80% in only an hour. That's pretty good. And that's usually about how long truckers take to have a meal, to stop, go to the toilet. It's pretty much the time that they cover. Now, interestingly, the range is quite impressive when you consider the, that the semi was charged for only 55 minutes on the first day. 55 minutes, it charged from 18 to 80%. High powered charging isn't only tough on the battery, it's also tough on the grid. I hope all the electric utilities out there notice this because this is a look into the future for their business, Mulaney said. On a separate occasion earlier this year, PepsiCo's electrification program manager, Dijan Antumovic, said that the semi's operational efficiency was 1.7 kilowatt hours per mile, which is incredibly impressive. Now, keep in mind, the key thing here is most countries have rules and regulations on how long you can actually drive a truck for. Most countries around the world, in fact, I don't know about the US on this, say you can only drive for four hours in one shift. You need then then to stop for half an hour, then you drive for four hours. So this would give you plenty of time to keep your Tesla Semi or your electric truck, no matter what brand it's from, up to speed. In other words, you're not fully charged, but with enough battery to get to your next four hour destination and so on and so forth. Of course, though, keep in mind that battery energy density will continue to improve. We're just going to see the range of these electric trucks continue to grow. Mercedes new electric truck that they're working on doesn't have quite as much range as the Tesla Semi, but it does have more range than their previous version. Let me know your thoughts, guys, on all of this in the comments. Thank you for watching.